Welcome to the Stuff and Things Podcast. Your home for all stuff related to your favorite things in entertainment. Now, here are your hosts. The amazing TVA music can mean only one thing. We are back and we're discussing Loki. It is the Stuff and Things podcast. I am Sam and joining me to break down episode two of season two. It's my partner in crime for this show. It's the Marvel super fan. It's Kaylee. Yo, yo, yo. Yo, and the energy brought on a Monday. <laughs> Check it out. Yo, oh, yes. yo, yo. <laughs> Yes, that's what we all need, like coffee injected into the veins. It's Kaylee. Yay! How you doing, hon? I am wonderful, thank you. That's what I like to hear. See, me and Stefan start these shows like, how you doing? Mm. Oh, not too bad. Oh. <laughs> you, you bring the energy, I like that. Uh, just so everyone is aware, Stefan is still uh, mid-move. He's moving sort of from from down south to up to north. Um, and currently, although the boxes are there and being unpacked now, it's <laughs> finding internet connections, <laughs> etc. <laughs> so he's still having fun alive with that. But if all goes to plan, he will be back to discuss episode three with us next week. Um, he is watching and he is in our chat. And as <laughs> said, after watching episode two, he was very confused, and i got to be honest with you, I've watched the episode three times, because when I, the first time I watched it, I was like, I feel like I've missed something. The second time I watched it, I was like, yeah, I've definitely missed something. <laughs> and, and the third time, I was like, right, I'm just going to write my notes, and, you know, it's <laughs> what, what I've missed, I've missed. So so that's where, that's where I'm at, that's where Stefan was at. How about yourself? Without going into the details, after watching this episode, did you feel... You followed it fine. Did you feel confused? How are you feeling? No, but I'm confused as to why you're confused. And now I feel I've missed something and I'm worried. Uh oh, uh -oh. or I I'm just, I'm just not that bright. And you're like, come on, Sam, come on. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I was just, I just enjoyed it so much. I didn't click that. I'd oh, missed no, it. I, I, I definitely enjoyed it. There's definitely no, there's no two ways about it. I think Loki with, with the fact it's got a second season as well, which helps, I think, because a lot of these shows are seem to seemingly one and done. But Loki's yeah. kind of climbing its way up there for me, is because I really enjoyed season one, and season two just kind of just carried on perfectly. So it's kind of clawing its way up there for me. Is like, hey, I could be your number one. I could be your favorite. <laughs> uh, so as tradition on this podcast hopefully you've remembered it's Loki season 2 episode 2 and the title of the episode was Breaking Brad <laughs> yes it was <laughs> I had to think about what I was saying because I've yeah. said it wrong nine times today <laughs> yeah, well there you go well, well rehearsed in front of the mirror Breaking Thank Brad you, Breaking Brad Breaking Brad, Brad, Brad. Brad. his Brad, name was Brad, Brad. Uh, I yeah. always love a pun play on words um when I saw Breaking Brad, I was kind of like, okay, so we're going to meet someone called Brad. And straight <laughs> away, uh, it opens up in 1970s uh, London, uh, which is nice. Um, and one of the things I noticed straight away, I don't know if you picked it up, but once I noticed this, I then realized I think this has possibly been there the whole time. When the little graphic comes up saying like 1970s London, it said Sacred Timeline under it and when i've gone back afterwards and had a look at the other times like so for example later in this episode when we go to see sylvie it says branched timeline hmm. never noticed that but it's been there the whole time because i went back over episodes <laughs> so yeah. that's something that's gone completely over my head however see? in this episode it was kind of important this is the problem. When I'm enjoying something so much, yeah. I miss the details because I'm so engrossed in what's happening. <laughs> yeah, no, I, but that's... I take that as a good sign. Yeah, that's, right? not, that's not a bad <laughs> thing. That's good. Um, so uh, it, being so engrossed and enjoying, um, it's possible a slightly nerdy thing would have passed you by. Um, they're arriving at a cinema. Mm -hmm. It's a film premiere. 
And along the side of the cinema, there's film posters all the way along there. And one of the film posters was uh, the character from Eternals. Is it Kengo? Kingo, yeah. yeah. So I did, I did notice that because ah, I feel, I I feel like I'm the only person in the world that actually liked that film. <laughs> oh, I liked it. Yeah, so I liked it. I um, I felt it, it, the way it was written could have been better as episodic. Like I feel like that that film possibly, if you made that a ten episode series to tell the same story, it might have worked a little bit better. But I enjoyed it. I I looked forward to that film for ages. Yeah. So when it came out, I, was, I quite liked it. Um, yeah, Stefan didn't. Yeah. <laughs> you really didn't. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, yeah, I, I spot. I'm glad you spotted that. That was that was kind yeah. of fun because I liked that. That was a complete throwaway. It's almost like when you were watching Spider Man, you kept seeing Rogers the musical stuff everywhere. It's <laughs> like ah, nice. <laughs> yeah. Um. So yeah. So like I said, uh, we're on the sacred timeline. They've gone to this movie premiere. And getting out of the car, the, the big superstar that the crowd's going wild for, it's X5, or <laughs> a.k.a. Brad. Now, we met X5 for the first time last week, and I think both of us just kind of described him as a bit, a bit of an ass. Not really, he just came across a bit, uh, was a bit of an ass to Mobius, um, a bit uber efficient. So to see him this week, basically on the sacred timeline, you know, X5, uh, but Brad giving it all, you know, to the crowd, to his fans, uh, speaking to the reporters. Um, you know, what do you say about the rumours about you? And he's like, hey, come on, man, I'm on a date yeah. here. It's like, <laughs> okay. Um, I think that's the, you know, even in the previous episode, he had kind of an air of arrogance. Oh, today. massively, yeah. So yeah. It's, it's very fitting yeah, that he... Yeah. <laughs> behaved in this manner i think <laughs> x5 is definitely brad brad is definitely x5 there's, Absolutely. No, there's no there's no kind of playing a character here this is just him yeah. being him um and so mobius and loki are there uh they bump into him and he, he has that kind of like shocked to see them um doesn't seem at all kind of like comfortable but then you're i mean this is one of the things that i was watching and i was kind of like i kind of feel like i missed something like last week he was with uh, General Docs and was kind of listening to her. They had that weird moment where she like bumped heads with him, and you're like, "Okay, mm. strange relationship they've got. What's going on there?" And then this week, he's he's. Uh, I think Mobius says he's undercover on the sacred timeline, trying to track down Sylvie. But he's clearly not doing that. <laughs> he's clearly <laughs> living his best life. Um. And then you got sort of Loki and Mobius, and he's like, oh, I'll get us all a drink, I'll get us all a drink. And Loki's like, he's running, isn't he? He's like, yeah, yeah he's running. <laughs> he's off, he's not deaf. Yeah. Um, so we then get a, a chase scene through 70s London, um, which is kind of fun. And Loki's basically running after him. Uh, he uses, you know, just a bit of TVA tech to try and get away from him. Loki's sort of rolling his eyes uses his projection magic to, to surround him and basically corner him eventually. Uh, I, I loved the visual of the three Lokis walking towards him and then the shadows developing the horns and grabbing him and holding oh, him in that place. Was so, do you know what? I've really missed that element of Loki. Mm. I really have. Like that's I, I like him because he's, you know... He's, he's bad. He's naughty, <laughs> yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah, he yeah. is. He's, he's mischievous, which is the whole point. And I kind of felt like... I'd missed some of that in yeah. some of the previous stuff that I've, you know that he's been in. You know, the previous season wasn't quite there, and yeah. it was just different. So it was nice to see that, and it was a bit of a um, one of those oh moments when you see the helmet. And, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, it's kind of interesting, like like you said that about him, and we didn't really see that aspect of him um, in in the season one and into this point. But like like for me, it's kind of like he, you know, as much as I hate this word, you know, the journey. But his <laughs> character's kind of gone through this because the, the, the version of him that, of course, landed in the TVA was the version that had just attacked New York, had just been taken hostage, and then, you know, he, he managed to escape. And that was when he became variant and the TVA grabbed him. Mm -hmm. So he didn't have all the kind of stuff with his brother and everything, but then he did witness it. Remember, he watched it on the mm -hmm. Sacred Timeline tapes, how he died. And so it was kind of interesting. It's almost like he's all the time trying to reconcile with himself. Like, okay, this is me. All of me is me. And he's sort of been 
fighting that instinct a little bit. Whereas in this episode, yeah. Mobius was like, come on, you're the god of mischief. Come on, yeah. you know. Embrace the crazy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, But it was interesting because like, he does catch Brad. They do drag him back to the TVA. And we have this kind of interrogation scene. Um, and then there's two parts to it, which I find really interesting. One is Brad really does. I mean, he's, he's quite, like you say, a real smug bastard. <laughs> and just, <laughs> he really lays into Loki. And then there was one moment where I felt like, oh, he's really gone because he mentioned his mother. Oh, and I was like, ooh, this isn't going to end well for you. <laughs> he was really antagonizing him, wasn't he? And it was a, a, yeah. it, it was a, it was a, I wrote truth bomb in my notes. Yeah. And it, but it was really hard to watch it because he's, yeah. he's not that person, you know, he's not that person in this. No. And it's, again, him fighting himself and like, yeah. what are he's, you saying? I don't like it. And he's, he's kind yeah. of nastier instincts. Mm. And, and, the, and the aspect of it, which I find interesting, is probably you as well, is when he then turned on Mobius, because Mobius lands a joke, um, you know, knock, knock, who's there, Brad Walsh. <laughs> Brad Wolf, who oh, yeah, that show business, and you're kind yeah. of like, okay, Loki, you know, he tried to break the tension, yeah. and then he turns on Mobius, <clears throat> and it's actually Mobius that snaps. And what's interesting to me is there's something we've talked about a little bit, is that like, who is Mobius and the say Who was he? Who who was his sort of sacred timeline self, etc. Mm. Um and and the kind of the kind of idea that he you know when when he walks away after snapping and him and Loki sit down to to have some pie, uh, key lime has to be key lime, key lime. yeah yeah and they then mm. they sit down to kind of talk for a bit and he admits like yeah you know I snap I mean the bit where he's like I didn't snap it's all planned I was following you you were clearly in front of me I love that that was just like a funny interaction. <laughs> But yeah, they're sat down having their pie, and he kind of admits, like you know, and Loki's asking him, "Well, obviously that hit a nerve," and yeah. his explanation actually kind of really made sense to me, which is, you know, it's like, are you worried it'd be something bad? He's like, "No, I'm worried it'd be something good." Like, imagine having that in my head. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, it makes you wonder, actually, like, like you say, you know, Brad's time. Yeah. But Brad's whole personality, you know, you can tie it back and actually you see those elements of Mobius. Yeah. What You know, who was he? Who is he? Yeah, yeah. And it's really fun to think about because there's a thousand different, you know, oh, lots, options yeah. that it could be. Yeah. But I'd be really keen. And I wonder if we get to see that. I think that would be a really fun thing to see. But actually, I don't want it to be bad. Yeah. No. <laughs> but I, it might be. And that's what I'm worried about. Yeah. I, I don't want it to be bad. And, and this is almost like equal measure. I don't want it to be amazing either. I kind of just yeah. want him to be a, a like a salesman for, for you know, speedboats and jet skis. <laughs> jet skis yeah. You know? <laughs> and, and just so he'd look at that and just be like, oh, that's, that's oh. fun. <laughs> you know, and, and that's it. He doesn't need to, doesn't need to <laughs> overthink it, doesn't need to be upset. Um, but yeah, the, the, you know, if we don't see him on a jet ski this season, I mean, they're they're just they're just killing us, really. It should be. <laughs> of course, the other option is, and this is something which I'm I'm starting to think about more and more, mostly because of Ouroboros Ob. But Mobius character Ouroboros, for example, what if they actually those characters aren't from the timeline? They're not variants. They're actually something else because you got all those others that are like. Hunter B sixteen, Hunter this, Hunter that X five. Mm-hmm. What if the characters that have got names, if you like, aren't variants? They're originals. Yeah. They're created. Yeah, and they've had their minds wiped because of you know part of they were part of the wars that happened, etc. Yeah. It's just like like general docs. You know, do you know what I mean? There's sort of there's characters there that are named, and then there's characters that aren't. Mm. And I'm just wondering if the named characters perhaps it's different but i don't know we'll have to wait and see um but yeah that, that was another thought I had. but the two of them sitting and talking I, I find that interesting and also loki just kind of like hey you know sometimes your emotions get the better of you remember that time i was so mad at my father and my brother i took new york hostage with an army and threw tony stark off a building <laughs> it's like what what an interesting way of putting that invasion <laughs> <laughs> Um, but, but I guess you know he he might feel differently about it. Well, it's yeah, you know, same. you know, Ant Boot was his thing. <laughs> you know, yeah. does, does an Ant have a quarrel with a boot? Uh, so, from his point of view, on his plane of existence, that was a temper tantrum to him. Yeah. 
Uh, it yeah. was kind of a big deal for the people of Earth. Uh, nothing mm-hmm. was the same qu- again after that. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was that was a, that was an interesting kind of just little bit of dialogue from him. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, remember that time I was so cranky? I did this. <laughs> yeah, whoa, what was I thinking? Um, but it's, a, it's a good way to make us remember that actually there are all of these different timelines and all of these different variants and all of these different scenarios. Yeah, because you can kind of you can kind of. I know the whole season is about that, but you can kind of forget really yeah, quickly yeah. what yeah. that impact has been up until now. So I, yeah. I quite like those little callbacks and it's yeah, nice me to too. Hear, you know, Tony's name and stuff. And I can yeah. only imagine how Steph reacted to that. Oh, here, here in Tony Star. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that was it. It was the best episode ever. Just hearing yeah. his name <laughs> thrown off of a building. Um, <laughs> Whilst this is happening, um, so they, they've got this 10 pad off of uh, Brad X5 and he's he's altered it and they can't work out why and they're looking at it and they go to see OB. Um, OB, <laughs> um, the line delivery from this actor in this scene for me was just so amazing because it could be dripping with sarcasm what he says to them but it's not <laughs> it's a genuine question of they say obi can you look at this temp pad he goes yeah sure i can get right into this but is it more important than me stopping the entire universe from melting down they're like no no it's not okay that seems prudent <laughs> it's just being innocent yeah. in his voice but that's just him all over and yeah. that's what makes me really really hope yeah. that it's not an act and there's nothing sinister <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I really, yeah, same as you. I mean, I, I, uh, unwilling participant at worst is what I'm hoping for. Absolutely, uh, yeah. Because that, and the line delivery, you know, you could get that so wrong. Mm. But he just nails it because it's just like, so he's just a- asking a genuine question. And he's like, okay, great, yeah, so I'll carry on doing what I'm doing. Here you go, here's the guidebook, you know, the thing I wrote for everybody that's on every desk. Here's the 10 pad back, go and fix it yourself. <laughs> Like it's so easy, you yeah. know, it's obvious. Come on, guys. <laughs> and and I do I do kind of love as well. So so we then whilst those guys are looking at that, Casey is uh speaking with Hunter. Um we have this fun line where it's like, Oh, how are you getting on tracking Renslayer? Oh, you mean the Renslayer case? Like, why are you whispering? Yeah. <laughs> it's like she she tried she killed someone, she imprisoned me, she tried to hack the entire TVA we're allowed to be finding her. Is oh yeah, a yeah, good point. Uh, Casey again is this kind of like innocent. Uh, everything he says, like line delivery, is just kind of like genuine. Um, a total nerd. We find out in this episode, and a total nerd for the TVA guidebook. Oh, man, crush yeah. for OB. You know, yeah. again, just the the smallest little things just make this. It's just so cute. It is. It was <laughs> great. These, um, these weird personality traits yeah. that, you know, you get. But again, you know, who was he? And I'm going to be yeah, thinking about this for yeah, ages. Yeah, no, no, do. Because again, like, he's another character who's got a name. Yeah. And it's just kind of interesting to me that uh, when we meet him in season one, he says to Loki, it's like, oh, I've, I've always been here in record. So, like, I've never been allowed, you know, I've never done anything else. And yet when Loki goes back in time to when he damages the floor, he's not there. He's not, that's not his role. He's somewhere else. Mm. So again, like this, this is someone who's had their mind wiped possibly several times reset. So, you know, again, who, who's he, but his knowledge of what's going on. Cause he says, I got a TVA guy, but yeah, I've memorized it. Mm. So he looks at the tempad is like, yeah, it's not what he's done to it. Isn't to stop us tracking. You know, this, this is definitely not that. Um, and also then, of course, like you say later on, <laughs> he, he, um, uh, Hunter takes him to obviously work with OB thinking, look, this guy knows everything from this book. This, they, you know, he should be your apprentice sort of thing. Yeah. And, and as they walk into the room, you just hear in the background, we're all going to die. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> what? And it's because OB's tried to fit this device and he cannot open the the kind of like security doors, if you like, the blast doors to get to it because his isn't his temporal aura. And what you learn is like, okay, so the person who made this is the only person who can open it. And the hunter says, he who remains. And he's like, yeah, <laughs> and he's dead. 
yeah, we're all going to die. Yeah. <laughs> it's such a, again, just so matter of fact. But he's running around <laughs> screaming, we're all going to die, and then get introduced to Casey, and he's like, oh, hi, I'll sign yeah. an autograph. Sign <laughs> <laughs> your bet. Yeah. Sure. Just yeah. so um, in his own little bubble and everything, he, he's brilliant. Um, one of the things that Casey does discover is that Miss Minutes is working with Renslayer. Um, again, something this show does is I really love the dialogue and interaction, and Loki and Mobius especially, because what happens in this moment is he reveals that to them. And Loki says, oh, wait, you know, when I was in the past, I heard this recording where Renslayer was working with He Who Remains. And you, Hunter kind of reacts. And by the way, I thought she was going to drop an F-bomb. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, that, she, Renslayer, she's full of, full of surprises. And I was like, oh, that was good. <clears throat> Sorry. But also, the thing that made me laugh was... Mobius then is a complete throwaway, which because he's interrupted, says, "When were you going to tell us about that? Like, when when were you going to tell us you heard that?" And it's like before he even gets to answer, they've they've moved on, like the the, the mm. kind of conversations moved on. So, yeah, I love that. I love the dialogue between the two. It always feels very natural. Um, and they're like, I think you said it before, they're like best friends. Yeah, the, it's just that their whole relationship is. I think there's respect. I think there's a bit of mutual fear somewhere, you know, and yeah. it just it just works for me. And even, you know, I'd like to go out with those two for a <laughs> yeah. beer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I just, and, you mean, and I said before. Do you mean before, the actors or do you mean the characters? The actors, you know, yeah. I, I'm, I'm not, I haven't been a huge fan of Owen Wilson's stuff previously, but yeah. I, I've completely, I think it's just the, the types of movies he's been in, you know, and the characters yeah. he's played. But, I just, I, I, I absolutely adore him in this, and the two of them together, I just think would be so fun, yeah. and it translates really well to to TV. Well, I agree. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, so like I said, when they were having their pie, um, they're trying to work out how they can possibly get X Five to talk because you know he's a very experienced TVA agent, and you do get Mobius basically like let the Loki out. You know, come mm -hmm. on, you're you're Loki now. Did you think all along it was a plan, or did you think Loki had gone rogue? No, I kind of knew. Yeah. Um, it wasn't a surprise. Yeah. Um, I think I was waiting for it to be not a plan, and yeah. then that would have surprised me. But, yeah, it, yeah it, it kind of, yeah, I knew. And actually, it was that conversation that made me think, has Mobius subconsciously encountered, or, you know, somewhere in his subconscious yeah. knows that Loki could get through that because they've encountered each other somewhere else and we just, we yeah. don't know and they don't know. Maybe. You yeah, know? Maybe. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's there's a, <laughs> the options in this show are kind of countless yeah, for stuff. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So uh, Loki does go and, uh, in essence, tortures Brad <laughs> um, by putting <laughs> him inside this sort of time bubble box thing. And he's like, oh, what does this button do? <laughs> he knew. Um, he knew what he that knew. button did. Yeah, knew. yeah, just got a mischief. <laughs> um, by the way, anyone who feels sort of like a bit claustrophobic would not have enjoyed that scene. No. <laughs> it's like, oh, no. no, 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 don't like it. No. Um, it was I kind of sit there and like my shoulder went up and my, my yeah. legs clamped together and yeah. my hand pulled into fists. Yeah. And like, oh, oh, nope, oh. don't like it. Yeah. Um, uh, Brad does eventually does eventually spill. He's like, I don't know where Dox is, but, you know, I did find Sylvie. Um, so basically what happened was, it, at least it appears, he was he was tasked with finding her, and he went undercover to achieve that, found her, but it was like, no, nah, I'm just going to keep living my best life as Brad. <laughs> it appears to be... Um, appears well, you would, be, wouldn't you? You well, wouldn't, what, well, you know. What, what was interesting is when he was kind of talking about it. it was like you know you're the ones in here screaming about we were kidnapped we were taken off the timeline da, 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 da. i'm living my life i've just gone yeah. back to live a life um yeah it was it was kind of interesting um because his perspective on that is kind of like okay well that's not wrong i do get what you're saying uh but he was also ridiculously squirrely 
and it wasn't really like I, I was watching it and I think Mobius said it a couple of times like why are you so you know jumpy what what aren't you telling us and he would just mm-hmm. continued being that way he does take them to the 80s uh USA and again it does come up this is a branched timeline at the bottom um when it comes up telling us where we are and it's the McDonald's that we saw in the after credits after episode one. Uh, Sylvia's obviously been here for some time now. She's got the 80s hair going. Oh, the mullet, the yeah. fringe. Terrible, <laughs> terrible haircut. That is full <laughs> 80s, though. That was, you know, you, you go back to any pictures of our family, aunties and everyone from off yeah. of 80s. They all had it. <laughs> Shocking. Oh, um, and yeah, she's there working at McDonald's, so happy, kind of like living her best McDonald's life. With all the stars on her on her name oh, badge. Oh, she had the five stars, five stars. Yeah. Uh, she, she, yeah, she knew what she was doing. She'd already restocked the the straw dispenser. She she was <laughs> she was doing a good job, and then she looks up, and there's Loki, Mobius, and a guy she probably wouldn't know, but in a TVA jumpsuit with the collar on. <laughs> she's like, oh, really? Here we go again. So, so here's something that was a little bit kind of. My my lasting memory of these two from the end of season one was that they disagreed over what they should do with He Who Remains. Yeah. And Loki was talking to her and was trying to say, like, like wait a minute, just wait, let's talk about this. And she kissed him and booted him through a door. That's my memory of how that ended. Am I right? Mm-hmm. So why is she pissed at him? Do, do you know what I mean? It's like... Was she... I pissed at him because he didn't agree with her in that moment or I, I wasn't entirely sure I kind of felt like if either of them should be pissed at the other it should be him yeah and, and I think he is I think he's just better at hiding it I think Sylvie is in that moment thinking for look for god's sake why why are you here I'm happy yeah. do not risk everything yeah. you know I'm happy you know you've come in here to bullshit up yeah, you know, yeah. you're going to come in here and ruin my, you know, perfect yeah. existence. My happy little life on the timeline. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, I found my place. Leave me alone. I was kind of doing all right yeah. without this nonsense. What is coming? You know, I think blissfully unaware. Um, and she was happy. And she I mean, knows. I mean, she spent her entire life running from the TVA. So Loki kind of in this moment being kind of pro TV, I can completely understand her kind of looking at him like, really? Mm. <laughs> um, he's trying to get the point across that, you know, with he who remains dead, the TVA is literally the only thing standing between oblivion, you know, and all of these variants. And she's just like, no, I'm not buying it. If any of them show up, I'll kill them. <laughs> you know, she just <laughs> she just backs herself quite. You know, I killed the last one, I'll kill the next one. Whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, meanwhile, whilst these two are talking, uh, Mobius is having apple pie now in, in McDonald's, enjoying a nice meal. He's very happy. Who um, doesn't enjoy a McDonald's apple pie? <laughs> Do you know what? I'm Forty years old, never had one. Oh, we need to rectify this situation yeah, no, immediately. Yeah, and no. you need to get a caramel McFlurry with your apple pie, put them together, oh. and when they've got the chocolate ones, add one of them in there as well. I've never had a McFlurry either. Oh, my God. What is yeah. the matter with you? Yeah. How are we friends? Yeah, it's weird, isn't it? Oh. <laughs> How do I even <laughs> like you? Thanks, mate. That was, that was kind. I needed that today. Oh. Um, okay, so right, so I'll, I'll add that to the list of stuff I need to do before I'm 50. Um, yeah, so I, uh, the, the, the kind of scene in this, like I said to you, he was a bit squirrely, he was a bit kind of all over the place, and he's really doing that when he's in there. And Mobius is sort of picking up on it, like, is, is this an ambush? Have you, what have you, you know, what have you done? What is going on? And then they take him outside, and Sylvie enchants him to basically find out that he's fully aware that Dox's plan is to bomb all of the branches. Um, and basically, because they're on a branch timeline, he's trying to do everything he can to get off of it because he knows at some point it's going to get deleted. Mm. Uh, Sylvie, because she's enchanting, finds out where Dox is. So X5 did know where she was all along. That treacherous little git <laughs> by the way he had me for yeah. <laughs> even when being tortured he revealed a little bit not everything um so that's kind of impressive by the way with him 
Um, Mobius kicks him back to the TVA. The three of them then go to where Dox is, and Dox has basically got a setup where she is, like an old train station, and is basically just sending agents through doors constantly with charges, killing branch timelines. Mm. Um, so it's an interesting thing in this, and I saw someone put this on on um on YouTube, I think, or like one of the breakdowns. And the breakdown was a, a picture of Docs and basically said, technically, this person just killed more people than Thanos. Yeah. And I was like, wow. Oh, wow. And so they basically did a breakdown of like, so in the TVA, you see 300 and something timelines, branches have been destroyed by Docs. It says it's on the computer screen. And they say that that's a third. So it's like 1,000 or something timeline. She's killed 300. If you work on the theory that that's 300 Earths and the population of Earth roughly 7 billion, <laughs> she, yeah. she's killed into the trillions. And <clears throat> one of the things in this is like Hunter is very emotional looking at the screen. Like those are people. Those are. And what's interesting to me is the characters in the TVA, for example, didn't see it that way at all. Mm. Like like before, you know, they were just variant scum. Remember, like you know, just kind of, yeah. you get deleted. It doesn't matter because you're not supposed to exist. And now the kind of all of that is is gone, and now they're they're kind of having to deal with the emotion of what have we been doing all this time, and then seeing that General Docs went and did that. So it's like. We've turned we turned the corner. We're not doing that anymore, and then being confronted with, in essence, mass murder on that scale, mm. being being carried out in your name. Yeah, I mean, is I find those scenes quite quite sort of tough. Quite sort of like, wow, that's yeah, that's actually really when you think about it, that's really quite brutal. And if if you're in the TVA and your kind of mindset is, we're here to protect, we're here to kind of help. And that's how you want that TVA to be. To to witness that must be pretty harrowing. Um, yeah, it's not your average Monday at work, is it? No, um, no, not um, at all. And having that conflict in your mind of, like you say, having done this and thinking you're doing it for a specific purpose, and yeah. then having that just completely blown up, yeah. and then having to see that happen yeah. with just you know, it would make you question everything, even yeah, more well, so. Yeah, massively. Um, Docs has done this. Docs is stopped by Sylvie, Loki, and Mobius. Um, again, the fast dialogue in this, uh, Sylvie putting her hand out, don't overthink it, mm. um, I loved. Um, because, <laughs> again, really enjoyed that. But it also goes to show when those two are together, their, their power really is enhanced. Um, you know, when she was able to enchant... Lyaf, was it? Is that the name of the creature in the in the sort of beyond time? Mm -hmm. Lyaf, yeah, and that was largely because they kind of combined to help each other. Yeah, um, and I I appreciated that actually the fact that it was just such a quick fleeting yeah. sentence because they really could have dragged that out, and oh, I, I'm glad that yeah. they didn't. Yeah, yeah, massively, and it, you know it didn't need to be more, and it just. No, when, when you're when you're watching it, you know, don't overthink it. Doof, and you're like, ah, well, that's good. Yeah. yeah, that was that was yeah. smart. It's her way of just like you know, just because we're <laughs> here together right now, we're not, we are not simpatico. <laughs> um, so uh, General Dox is taken, and her loyalists, or at least all the ones that are there that they found, which possibly means there's still a few out there, which is frightening, worrying. Um, yeah, um, but yeah, they're dragged off back to the TVA. Uh, Loki and Mobius go back. Sylvie does join them, and obviously there is this horrible moment. Um, I've talked about a horrible moment for a minute, but one of the things I noticed, again, this is a little bit nerdy, and I wanted to kind of get your opinion on this, is one of the things I noticed is on the computer screen, it says the sacred timeline 616. So that basically fits into the Marvel Universe 616 being the MCU. Yeah. And in the TVA, that is the sacred timeline. Yeah. Now, 
in my head up to this point i thought of all of the branches and all of the things were different numbers because if you remember in um doctor strange uh when he's in the illuminati universe and they're like oh ours is two whatever yours is 616 yeah so in my head i was like oh okay all the branches are that however <laughs> On the computer screen, it shows all of the branches from 616 are actually designated 616A, 616, you know, 616A1, 616A2. So actually, no, 616 is the sacred timeline for the TVA, and every branch that's come off of that is designated a variant of 616. So blowing my mind completely here, does that mean that this isn't the multiverse? This is literally branch timelines from this one universe, and the multiverse is actually separate to this. Do you see oh where I'm going with this? I do, I do. And oh my god, no, yeah. I can't I can't deal with that right now. Oh my god. But you but you do see where I'm thinking. It. It's do. like it's like, well, <laughs> If if the universes are numbered, if we're saying like okay, there's one through however many, and the MCU timeline is six one six, and the TVA are basically saying that yeah, this is six one six, and all of these branches are six one six variants, then logically <laughs> that means wow. that somewhere out there there's Earth five, and any and they have their own TVA, <laughs> and any branches on that timeline is. 5A1, 5A2. Do you, do you see what I mean? It's just infinite. And I think that, uh, whilst it's fun to think about, yeah. I hope that isn't something I, that, well, oh God, please don't go there because <laughs> I, I am struggling enough as it is yeah. to, con to contain all of this. And w at the end of Doctor Strange, when Clea took him, where the. Yeah. And how did he go? Yeah. And is all of this completely irrelevant because he's gone to five whatever yeah. timeline and like, oh my god, no. Yeah. Um. So so yeah, uh, I want to put that out there for everyone because that's been on my mind, and now I want everyone <laughs> else to experience the pain I'm in while I'm trying to figure this out. Thanks for that. You're welcome. It was my <laughs> it, it, honestly, it was my biggest fear with the MCU when I learned about the direction they were going in with multiverse and everything. Like that my biggest fear was it'd be like, oh no, I've gone cross-eyed. Mm. And, and i'd lose complete track of everything and here we are sort of deep into this now and i'm still not really sure what's going on <laughs> and i'm still sort of trying to piece it together and i know i know this is basically following very very famous comic book arcs but obviously mm. being adapted and i know they've already announced you know kang dynasty film and and the secret wars which is kind of like the culmination of all of the timelines and universes and all this stuff. But yeah, it, like to me, like I said, when I looked at that screen, I was like, okay, well, hang on a minute. <laughs> They're all 616 variants. Yeah. And I was kind of like, okay, that does make sense because they say variant. So it would make sense. Okay, this is our sacred timeline and anything branching from that is a variant. Uh, yeah, so basically, there we go. That, that's that's just put that out there for everybody. Yeah. I'm gonna and... block that from my mind and not <laughs> think about that, otherwise, Thanks. I'm not gonna sleep for a week. <laughs> yeah, I was just gonna be like, get to episode three, and hopefully, OB will explain it to me. <laughs> I, I just want a nice little explanation video of OB sitting me down. Yeah, like, oh, it's all in the guidebook, Sam. Oh, brilliant. Yeah. Thank you, OB. Just read it to me then. <laughs> um, Sylvie. See, again, and this is something I'm going to put to you because I'm a little bit confused by. Sylvie stands there and sees the reaction of the TVA agents of just utter disgust and distraught over the lives that have been lost, which is a massive departure from the TVA she knew and hunted her. Yeah. Um, which is kind of what Loki was trying to get across, you know, which is like, look, everything's changed. <laughs> um, the TVA now is the defense, it is something worth, you know, being a part of. But she she just seems angry and just just isn't you know isn't willing to kind of take that on at all, um, and she leaves and she leaves just as Loki's saying to her is like it's harder to harder to stay. Harder to stay. <laughs> uh, so what do you think about Sylvie again in this moment? Because like to me, I'd have thought standing there and seeing the 
anguish because it was apparent you know all of them were just in oh, bits really? about it I, i'd have thought that would have made her realize okay this is different you know the, the okay what's going on or at least be curious mm. but it just she just seemed to like snap back to anger very very quickly um you know and the tva is rotten the tva is the problem i mean don't get me wrong docs is the one who's just gone and done this who in the name of the tva so she has a point in that regard but but what, what's your thoughts on her sort of like saying that and then skedaddling so my, my first in- instinct is what what else does she know because hmm. there is very much an air about her of i've got additional knowledge that i'm not sharing because okay. her reactions to some of the things that were said and done during this whole episode it almost you know when when loki kind of said you know enchant me see what see what i've seen and mm-hmm. you know when he's trying to to convince yeah. her it was almost uh, i don't need to i yeah. know you know and and, and I, I wonder actually is there something going on that she's not letting on and actually now you've said about the infinite number of yeah. sacred timelines. Is she an interloper? Has she come from a different timeline? Maybe she's not a variant. I don't know. <laughs> but I kind of get the, I'm suspicious um, that she knows something. Well, we know, I don't know what it is. We know in season one when Loki went to the future, the TVA was being evacuated and Sylvie was there. And mm. then he's pruned, which me and you discussed is kind of like a almost like it's possible he does it to himself or something mm. happens because he has to be in that loop, you know, to save him from, from time slipping. Yeah. So, so it was going to be interesting to see if we were right on that one, when, when we get to that point, but he was trying to say to her, like, you were there. And she's like, I don't care. And now you've said that it's kind of interesting of where she actually does know. Yeah. You know, because she does have that tempad, you know, she has that kind of raw tempad that she took from he who remains. Mm. And her McDonald's uniform, etc., was all actually enchantment because when she wants, you know, she goes back, she just, you know, Press. waves her hand and she's yeah. back yeah. in her Loki or Sylvie gear. Mm. Um so yeah, but but she did have to enchant Brad, like she didn't know that was coming. Like, you know, she, and like you just said, again, that's playing on my mind now. Like, enchant me, no, I don't want to. But then yeah. the minute Brad's being squirrely, she's like, oh, I ain't got time for this. Mm. Um, so if she'd known that, she'd have just acted, but she obviously didn't know what he was doing. Yeah, yeah. maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe. I mean, she is her kind of reaction to it, you know, is kind of strange to me in that but now yeah you're right there could be a questionable isn't it you yeah. know i just i don't know i don't know what's coming be interested to see if there's any other because i you know i've only recently watched just to see what kind of other theories are out there on that because yeah. again it's infinite you know oh it is, and Sylvie it is massive, very right? much the the core focus of this season i feel i think there's something's going to happen with her and we're all going to go what what you know yeah yeah, I mean, the, the kind of the one that is the big one at the moment is Renslayer. Because mm. this episode, they're trying to track her down. It's a needle in the haystack. But after Docs does destroy 300 of the timelines, they find her. They they track her tempad. So I'm hoping episode three, we are going to catch up with Renslayer and find out what the hell is going on there, who Renslayer is. Uh, miss Minutes again. I miss Miss Minutes. I really miss oh, her. No. I've got hey yo. <laughs> yeah. um, I, I miss having that sound effect on my on my <laughs> pad here, so I'm hoping she's in it next week and I can use it again. Um, mostly because it makes me jump. But yeah, so so the Renslayer thing, but yeah, it could well be there's there's more to it, and and like I said, I I just kind of feel like with this show, there's there's so many options, obviously. But the, the, like I said, the, the the characters who have names, I'm just really curious as as to whether they are variants. Um, but yeah, well, well, we will find out. I hope. Uh, but that was episode two. Uh, that's all my notes. Was there anything else you had you wanted to talk about from this episode? Um, no, I don't think so. Apart from I need to try that pie. I need some pie and you need to go and get a bloody McDonald's <laughs> apple pie. That's your homework. This is for a this thing. Week. All right. Okay. So okay. by next week, I will try. I will endeavor to do this. Thank um, you. McDonald's apple pie. 
Yeah, no, it's never with a caramel thing. McFlurry, okay? With a, and and eat them together like hot and cold. Go dip for it. it in. Dip, dip it in. Dip Use it in. your apple pie as a spoon. Okay. I, I feel like you're a connoisseur here from McDonald's, oh. and and this I I will obey. I will listen to you, <laughs> and I will get this done. Um, and it, the, you will all have my review was part of episode three of Loki next week. Um, Thank you very much. Yes, yeah, Look definitely. Forward to it. Um, I'm looking for. I mean, again, I, I'm really enjoying this show. Um, it's mm. episodic and it's written episodically brilliantly. Uh, at the end of the episodes, I'm angry at Disney Plus for not dropping them all at once. <laughs> and they're like, give me more. Um, no, I kind of like that because it gives me time to process. And no, and I, do you I, know, I know what? I'm actually enjoying this season more than the first so far. Oh, excellent. Okay. Yeah. I mean, mm. to me, it, it's just like a continuation. I mean, they literally just carried on where the end of the season one stopped which i like um but yeah I, and i think there's little additions there's little things like ob for example the character yeah brings a real kind of light uh not not comic relief not not really to that extent but just kind of a a real innocence in the tva which you could easily just be like sylvie and hate them you know, it's not all, all demon gloom, is yeah, it? He brings yeah. them, them even like even it. when he's running around, we're all gonna die. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, thank you for joining me again. Um, we will be back next week. Uh, thank you to everybody for continuing to listen and sending in your theories. Um, it's always a lot of fun to go through it. Uh, if we have time on well, next week, I'll run through some of them. If you do have a theory on Sylvie or anything you've seen so far, do send it in. Uh, I know Kaylee would definitely appreciate it. And if you yeah. have any thoughts on what I said about the timelines and everything, then send that in. Uh, but don't be mad at me. I, I can't <laughs> I can't help it, all right? Uh, but Kaylee, would you like to say goodbye to everybody? Goodbye, everybody. And we will be back next week. Uh, Obi, could I get you to take a look at this temp pad? Let me see. Huh. Interesting. Yeah, I can definitely get into it. Do you think this is a higher priority than preventing a temporal meltdown? Oh, no, 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 I, I, I just stay focused on the temporal meltdown. I agree. Seems prudent. Okay. Thank you for listening to the Stuff and Things podcast. We hope you enjoyed the show. You can find us on Facebook or online. Simply search the Stuff and Things podcast to join in our conversation every week.